Hello there, this is DBT and these are the rooms. And alright, let's continue playing some more Asphalt 9, the global version on Android. And today, we're going to be trying out the ATS Automobili Corsa RR Turbo to determine... How far can it take me? That's right, it's another episode to figure out how good or how bad is this car in the hands of a very mid player like myself. Now I'm going to be doing this in regular World Series, meaning it's not Ghost nor anything like that, just a straight up um, regular multiplayer. And you can see that I'm in Silver League, uh, barely having reached the Silver League, so we're going to see how far, well, the car can take me. Now, this car is kind of peculiar because it's a mid, uh, maybe mid, maybe mid high um, class C car and it's very strange because he has insane acceleration it's probably one of the best accelerations in the game uh, let alone in class C uh, though the top speed is very normal for class C the handling is eh and the nitro is definitely bad so obviously this car mostly relies on acceleration so any twisted track is where this thing is gonna shine so let's try it out Oh, and speaking of twisted tracks, let's see. Now, right now, because obviously I just started on the Silver League, I'm gonna be finding a, a decent amount of Class D cars, um, but that, that should be all right. I mean, I probably am gonna defeat most of them, if not all of them, but then again, remember, this car is not particularly fast, and there's definitely some D-Class cars that can put up a decent fight, just not in twisted tracks. As good as, in general, Class D cars can be, even the kings of Class D, I don't believe that there's a properly agile car over there. So that is where a car like this is definitely going to have an advantage. But the moment that I start facing more Class C opponents, that is where this thing is going to start suffering because, oh boy, it is a lot of fun, it is a beautiful car, but anytime that we get into something like Himalayas or anything that is top speed oriented, this thing is going to suffer quite a bit. But for now, first race is going to give us pretty much a W unless I really, really mess it up somewhere around here but that's not the plan so let's just make sure to not mess up but look at this beauty of a car and by the way right now i'm using it in a custom color that i set up for the car later on i'm going to use the default colors it actually has two default colors or rather i should say color combination it's kind of cool because half the car is one color the other half is another one but that's for later all right let's see what i was racing against and yeah unsurprisingly d all right this is class c but kind of lowish uh, then we got a relatively high class D and everybody else was uh, DSC tenses. So, oh, look at the rank of this one. Okay, yeah, that makes sense why I got a W, huh? Okay, here we go. We got Osaka, another twisted track, which should be good for this car. But now I'm finding more classy opponents. I saw at least a couple of NX NSXs and I think I also saw a uh, Maserati. But yeah, the Maserati I don't think is going to do very well in this track. The NSXs do have a, a, a decent chance. The NSX is actually sort of similar to this car a little bit because it does have good acceleration, nowhere near, nowhere near as good as this one, but similar top speed, also good acceleration. So in a way, it's kind of similar to this, though this is more agile, in my opinion, than the NSX. And obviously, I'm talking about the regular NSX, not the GT3 Evo, that's a, that's a completely different beast. But yeah, overall, man, just look at this beautiful car. I love, you know that I love racing cars. And actually, not too long ago, I made an episode of How Far Can It Take Me with the Brabham BT62, which is another racing car in Class C. Kind of in a similar situation, although the Brabham, it's a, it's a five-star car. While this one is four stars, which means this one has five uh, fuel. So that's kind of dope, because that means I can do more races before I need to watch a bunch of ads in order to refuel it. But yeah, um, what can I say? I really like racing looking cars and the ginormous wing on this thing is so absolutely beautiful. But there we go. Let's see what I was racing against. We got the SE 10 There's the Acura NSX. Um, I think, oh, wait a second. It actually dropped one position. Okay, so the two class D cars ended up in second and third. Then we got two NSXs. Then we got the Jaguar XJR. This is the new Legend Pass car, I think. Then there's the Alfiera in another NSX. All right, fair enough. And as I was saying for the official colors, it's kind of curious. This is the main one where it's half blue, half red. Looks kind of dope. And then you also have a secondary that it's more of a tan coloration, though it looks a little bit more desaturated than I remember. Oh, and I just realized the dragon on this side, it is, or whatever it is. I think that's a dragon, right? Yeah, it looks like a dragon. On this side is red and on this side is blue. Kind of dope. Okay, now we're talking. Now, this is a race where I may not have as big of an advantage because this is more of a top speed oriented track 
And there, I think all of my opponents are class C. So yeah, this is more what you would uh, expect to encounter when you're driving this car. Because normally, again, when you're very low in the Silver League, of course, you're going to be finding a lot of class D cars. But the higher you climb in, in that particular league, you're going to start finding more and more often class C cars. Uh, up to the point when you're reaching or you're getting close to the Gold League, you're going to start finding even class B cars. So yeah. But... Right away, I have taken the lead, and I don't know what to make of it. I mean, again, I'm playing in the global version, so farming is not as as prevalent as as it is on the Switch version, where I'll be like, yeah, people are just basically um, turbo uh, turbo farming, whatever. Turbo, I mean, the turbo controllers to press a button a gajillion times and whatnot. Ah, whatever. The point is that over here, I would expect to find people who are playing a bit more in earnest, but. I don't know, maybe I just got lucky, or uh, maybe this car is much more amazing than I thought. I'm telling you, this acceleration is absolutely crazy, and I love it for it. And, all right, yeah, there was a pennant for Rina. Definitely a car that can put a good fight against my car. The Viper, we got a Mercedes-Benz. Oh, this is the, the quote-unquote class C King, isn't it? The one that was added not too long ago, but that drifts horrible. We got an opening for Rina, Dodge Viper, and an NSX. All right. And just as I mentioned in the previous race, I'm already finding Class B opponents, so yeah, this is where my car really is going to start suffering. And that is why, generally speaking, I find very peculiar ra racing in Class C or in, in the Silver League, because it doesn't seem to last very long. It's very quickly, or rather, you get out of this league so, so, so very quickly that you don't have a ton of chance to play exclusively with Class C cars. Because right away you start encountering cars from another class. But as you know, the whole concept of this series of how far can it take me is precisely to see, well, <clears throat> how far can it take me? So even if it gets me to the gold league, I'm going to continue using it and just see to which point it's really going to start suffering because it's going to be facing opponents that are just way too strong. Um, seriously, the top, excuse me, the, the acceleration on this car is just so absolutely ridiculous that a, I think even against Class B cars, so long as it's very, very twisty tracks or, yeah, in general, agility-based tracks, I think this car can still put up a pretty good fight even against Class B cars, just straight out because of the acceleration. But then again, in Class B, you start finding some other cars that really have really great acceleration as well, like the Hurricane Evo Spider, for example. So, yeah, it's it, it, in Class C, it's where this acceleration really, really, really shines. But still, not a bad result. Uh, I got beaten precisely by a Lamborghini Huracan Evo Spider. I did beat a Corvette Grand Sport. There is a Pininfarina, two NSXs, a Lotus Elise Sprint. Oh, wow. And an Ortega Scalo Super Elettra. All right, there you have it. And not only am I in more danger now because there's Class B, more Class B cars now that I have reached the next league, we're also in Himalayas where, well, top speed is everything. So <laughs> I do expect to get some not amazing results. Although, to be completely fair, I did see also some accurate NSX and I think I put in for Rina um, H2. So, hey, so long as I don't get knocked down, I might just be able to keep a decent position, not straight up win the race, because the Hurricane Evo Spider is that much quicker than I am. I think that thing goes like 340 or something. So yeah, it's considerably faster. And obviously then with Nitro, that's going to be what, like 350 something compared to my 330 something. So yeah, it's uh, considerably faster. Not insanely faster, that much faster than me. But enough where it's definitely going to catch up. Right now, I have managed to keep the position of first place over here but again anytime now it's very likely that it'll catch up to me though if i oh no i wanted to have the shockwave for this particular jump and it's catching up it's catching up it's right behind me oh he knocked me down ah. well i did say something like that was gonna happen i did say if i did, if i don't get knocked down but hey still a third place though probably the guys uh behind me are still classy so all right not a ton not a ton learned from it, though I still gained some points. Uh, Hurricane Evo Spider, yes. And I Apex, also faster than me. I did beat a Grand Sport. There's a Super Elettra and an NSX. All right, at least I beat the Grand Sport. So that's something, I guess. Now I got a refuel. Oh, boy. Now, I do find very obnoxious this whole thing of having to refuel. I just watched a bunch of fats in order to, to refuel this car. Now, the beauty is that in Class C and even Class B, uh, refueling is not extremely painful because you only have to watch, well... You, 
know what happened. My game just kind of lagged out there for a second. Um, you have to watch some ads, yes. But for example, in here, I think I only had to watch four or five ads and then my car was ready to, to play again. In Class B uh, cars, it's still gonna take more, depending really in how low the rank of your Class B car is, is how many ads you're gonna have to watch. Or rather, I suppose you could say how high the rank is and all of that. But anyway, it still doesn't take too long because in Class C you watch an ad and it's gonna shave off, I believe, 45% of the refueling time. And the refueling time being about 50 minutes or so, you know, you shave on the first ad, you shave 45%, you're gonna eat, what, almost 50% of that that's like 20 something minutes so yeah it goes decreasing like that for class b cars i believe the rate of decrease per ad is like 35 percent. so that's a pretty good when it comes to oh jesus i missed the jump ah jesus that that ramp always gets me a little bit i can never quite remember where it's located but in class b cars um i think it's like 35 percent and even though the refuel time on B-Class is something like three hours, that's still not too bad. It's in Class A, and Class A is where it gets really obnoxious, because Class A, I think it's 25% for cars that take like four hours. So it, it's, it's a lot of ads that you gotta watch if you wanna get it going. Class A is way, way worse, so that's why I don't, I don't do this, this type of thing with those classes of cars. But all right, what happened here? Uh, the Asomar Vantage GT12 defeated me, but I did beat, well, a bunch of Class C cars. Scalo, then three NSXs. There's a 48 GTB, but not very upgraded. And a Grand Sport that ended up very, very, very far behind. Huh, that's that's curious. I would have expected it to do a little better, but okay. I'm not complaining. Oh, we have another top speed track. Okay, let's see what we can do over here. Um, but yes, I was saying at the start of the video, this car, it's kind of like mid-high Class C, but all things considered, just like I said already a bunch of times in this video, um, the acceleration of this thing really carries it. So long as you manage to, to keep a decent lead at the start and don't make too many mistakes, you should be alright to get a decent position. Of course, the danger is that eventually, if it's a top-oriented track, they're gonna catch up to you. And if they're the type of players who enjoy just knocking down players, well, that's gonna be basically your future. But hey, if you can play defensive enough where you can avoid that, then that's pretty good, I suppose. I don't know, I'm not that that defensive, I guess. But yeah, overall, I mean, what can I say? I really like the look of this car, and if you know anything about me on how I like using cars in this game and that dude just passed me, that's why I moved away, because I didn't want to risk a knockdown. But I honestly don't even remember how this thing drifts, so I guess we're going to find out now. Because I don't know if it loses a ton of speed. It definitely loses a bunch, and what is that? Is that another GT12 that just passed me? I don't know, but they definitely drifted better than I did. Okay. Um, as I was saying, you, if you know anything about me, you know that I like driving cars that I like as opposed to just the best cars out there. Because, of course, I could have brought stronger cars and whatnot, but the beauty is that, well, you know, I have a bunch of cars, so I might as well enjoy them. I like the variety. And, all right, let's see what beat me and what did I beat. Yeah, two GT12s beat me, but I did beat the Corvette Grand Sport, which seems very upgraded. An F12 TDF, another Grand Sport, another F12 TDF, and even the 600 LT Spider, although that one disconnected. But hey, that's a lot of B cars that I beat, so... Yes! Oh, yes! Now, if I remember correctly, this car, uh, you could only get it... Well, I, at first when it was released, I think it wasn't unleashed. And then it has gotten one or two key hunts. So that is the way to acquire this car. This is not exactly one of those common cars, but you know, if you like the way this looks, then go for it. I mean, it's a four star car. You know how many cars nowadays are five star, even if they don't deserve it, deserve it. This being a four star and having some pretty decent performance, I think it's very worth it. Now, I don't remember how many blueprints it requires uh, because obviously this being a key car, it would be a key hunt, which means you need to max out the car. All right, I'm not gonna 360. So, okay, good. Look at that, a clean uh, Corvette Grand Sport. People hate on the drivers of Corvette Grand Sports, but this guy just proved that that's just some unjustified prejudice. Now, let's be fair, a lot of <laughs> Corvette Grand use, uh, Grand Ah, Jesus, Corvette Grand Sport users do love 316, but hey, it's a common car, so of course, that's what would happen. But yes, I was saying, this is, this is the Corsa RR Turbo. It's not a common car, but if you like the car, if you like the performance, if you like something about it, yeah, totally, go for it. I... I really think this is a car that is worthwhile. Maybe just, it's my bias talking, the fact that I really like this racing looking vehicles, you know how I be. 
So yes, my, my bias is talking for me, but it's okay. It's still a very good looking gun. And right, this is the rate that the track that doesn't have the jump. And oh, oh, he beat me just by a tiny bit. Still, good fight. Good fight. The problem with this car really is that low, low, low nitro. And yeah, Chevrolet, Chevrolet Corvette Grand Sport is an Apex. I did beat a Grand Sport Hurricane Evo. Not fully upgraded, but hey, it should still be pretty good. An F12 TDF, another Grand Sport, and another F12. I'm gonna say that I'm very surprised how many F12 TDFs I'm finding over here. That's a car that I didn't find very often before, but now I'm seeing a bunch. Now, I'm gonna count myself lucky that I really didn't find that many, or really, well, the F12 TDF is. I was gonna say that I haven't found that many top speed oriented cars. We have found the F12 TDF, which is a fast, bleak, uh, fast, Class B car, but it's not an agile one or extremely useful because it's a more sluggish one. So yeah, I don't know. If we had found some Apollo N or something like that, then yeah, this car would have absolutely no chance. But because I keep finding on Corvette, I keep on finding Corvette Grand Sports and even Hurricanes. While they're great cars, they're not extremely fast. So that is the only reason why I think I'm I'm able so far to keep. Oh come on, man! I didn't have enough time to activate the. The shockwave. Right as I was gonna say that I'm able to keep a little bit of a position, then I get knocked down and I'm in dead last. Though, I don't know, maybe we can come back over here. Ah, it seems unlikely. Because this whole section is all about top speed. My acceleration might help me a little bit. And if someone gets knocked down, maybe I'll recover one uh, placement. But no, it seems that I'm last place because of a knockdown. Oh, well. Uh, again, not an insane car, but for Class C it's more than useful, and as you can see, you can still put up a little bit of a fight against Class B cars so long as you don't get knocked down. Look at how many Grand Sports are there, holy moly! Alright, it would have been nice to have gotten a better position here, but okay, it is what it is. Uh, but yeah, that is the Corsa RR Turbo, what a beautiful car, and again, a rare one, but I think it's worth to, to do the key hunt, so long as you either like the idea of having a crazy acceleration beast in class c or simply you're like me and you just like the the visual of the car but that's gonna do it for this video if you enjoyed it you know what to do hit the like button also tell me in the comments which other car would you like to see another episode of how far can it take me and if i have the car and i can do it i'll make a video on it because why not we gotta test some of these cars but that's all for now thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one take care and stay safe mm, bye bye